Welcome back, golfers. Uh, we are playing our second round at Fuji Classic. This is a golf course which is near Mount Fuji. And the photos you've seen just now, uh, you can expect to see these views when you are here. Unfortunately, today, or this day is a cloudy day, so there's not much uh, view or scenery. However, it's still not going to stop us from having a wonderful round of golf. This course reminds me of a resort style Lynx type of uh, course. Uh, there aren't many trees around, so I believe that um, the wind does play a big part on this course. This course is also uh, cut driven, uh, there aren't many caddies here, which also means that you probably have to select the clubs that you want before you walk towards your ball. Oh my God. A great way to start the first hole, a birdie. Thank you. We are starting on the 10th tee, so hole 11 is a par 5. When I do play a course that I'm unfamiliar with, just you're just judging based on where you can actually um, send your drives to. I always pay attention to where I can miss my shots. So this hole, the right side is really wide and here I'm hitting a very solid stinger. Maybe just a bit too low setting myself up for a very good third shot with a 5 iron. There's water on the left side of this pin, therefore right of this pin is always a safe spot. There isn't a driving range for you to warm up on this course, just a chipping area and a putting area. So do use the first few holes as your warm up. The greens are running at 9, but in my opinion I think they are not running that quick. A nice clean up for par, one under after two holes. This course is actually played on Mount Fuji and the one thing I noticed after playing a couple of holes, my ball does fly a bit further. So I do have to take into account maybe half uh, to one club more which is kind of interesting because normally when we play, we are always playing uh, shorter clubs or shorter distances. I hit a nice wedge into uh, this pin position. However, uh, misjudged the distance and I have a really long putt for birdie. So pace is really key. I gave this a really good whack and a very nice, simple tap in par. What? Maybe not. Okay, a nice simple tap in bogey. What? I deserve to get slapped. Hole 13 is a par 3, 197 meters. Pretty long. Um, the bailout is on the right side. I don't think um, I can carry the bunker and even if I do, there's rough at the back. So the plan was to just play right side and kind of short. There are two ways to play this, play a bump and run or a 58 degree with a um, slight loft. I went with that decision as I'm not really sure how the ball is going to react when I'm going to bump it off just outside of the green. Just cleaning up for another par. So we are one over after four holes. Hole 14 is really interesting. Um, I'll let you know why as we approach the green. So a drive is pretty straightforward. Then hit this well, pulled it slightly and the ball ended up in the rough on the left side. From here, the pin is way left. I do not have a high cut in my hybrid. I just do not have that shot. And the ball was kind of semi buried. The only available shot was to play far right. So you can see my ball is far away from this pin. I have to hit this ball really high up and let it land soft. The ball did carry it towards the pin, it landed on the down slope and it kicked towards the back of the green. And here I am saving par. Fifteen is a par five at four hundred and sixty-six meters. Uh, this course is played in yards, so I've just um, 
readjusted and calculated the distance in meters, struck a beautiful drive right down the middle of the fairway. And here I'm going with a three wood. I actually do have to play a mini cut to negotiate the trees. Unfortunately, I can't hit the cut, but the ball went dead straight. And then here I'm blocked by the trees. I had to play the shot slightly lower. Um, I've got lots of green to work with. Place the ball at the back of my stance with a sand wedge. And just go for three on, go for a long birdie putt. Walk away with two parts and with a par. This 390 meters par 4 um, isn't that long with the wind behind us. Fairway is rather wide. The view on this hole is actually a very nice one. Still, unfortunately, it was a very cloudy day. We could not really see much of the view. Hole 17, I would say, would be the signature hole on this course. This par 3 looks really beautiful. Beautiful. The pin is tucked left, so it's not a pin where I'm going to attack as I do want to play it safe. Went with a 9 iron. Played right in the middle of the green. And just give myself for another long part and hopefully it goes into the hole. Well, what do you know? Slowly inching my way back to even par, we've got uh, this par 4, which is hole 18. It's a beautiful finishing hole. And we've got the mountain and also the clubhouse as the backdrop. This isn't a very long par 4. Struck the driver pretty well, sort of bombed it, and I'm only left with 55 meters to the pin. The pin is at the back. I have to hit this ball high up, let it land soft as I know the slope is going to kick the ball towards the back of the green. Another chance for birdie. Will I sink this in? I'm liking how I close the front nine. So even par. So the whole one is actually an opening par five. Kind of interesting and Visually, you can't hit the ball left. You actually have to play towards the center or center right. I have a downhill lie with the pin on the right. So basically, any ball that's on a downhill lie, the ball would almost immediately squirt towards the right. I had to play this low only because of the lie, which was kind of to my advantage. The ball landed short and rolled towards the green. I have a very long part for Eagle, hoping for a two part as this is a three or four part zone. And a tap in birdie, hopefully. Whew. One under after 10 holes, not too bad. Hole 2 is a par 3. This green is rather long laterally. So if you can look at the far left, that's also the same green. So the pin is tucked on the right side. The ball failed to draw back and I thought that was a very good bailout area. But when I got to my ball, this is actually a really difficult up and down. The green slopes away from us downhill with a very big slope right to left. And I'm left with a very difficult cleanup for par. What? Hole three, par four. Now we've got the wind in our face. I'm just trying to find the middle of the fairway. Did that successfully. 
and we are left with a wedge. This par 4 is at 408. Again, visually, you have to play towards the right of this fairway. So here I went with a straight shot. Actually, I intend to play a high cut, but it just turned out to be a straight one, fortunately for me. And again, with a wedge of 110. The pin is on the right side, wasn't fully concentrating on this shot. Struck this poorly and the ball ended up in the right bunker. The sand on this course is sort of pebblish. So you feel like when you strike the sand, it's hard, not that soft. And you feel like you're hitting bigger stones, something that I'm very unfamiliar with. Again, we are into the wind on this hole. Just trying to find the fairway. Normally with shots that I'm trying to find the fairway, I'm trying to slow down my swing and just get my body to rotate. Not really going to use much of my wrist. Therefore, the ball will always come out slightly lower and straighter and not that far. On this second shot, I had 141, went with a smooth 7 iron and this downhill part was really fast, really, really fast. So a two part from this distance would be a really good one. Hole six, par five is a short one. It's a good opportunity for me to score and uh, take a birdie. So I just wanted to bomb one. Unfortunately, I executed this really poorly and pulled it towards the left. Nope, kicked left. And what made things worse was very sway. The ball found the trees and I could only punch it out with a 5 iron. Even then, I didn't do this really well. Therefore, I'm left with another 6 iron, a really good layup on the par 5. 163 meters, ball above feet, which sort of suits my draw and also means that I have to aim really far right to get the ball coming back towards the pin. From here, my mentality is to chip this in. Almost made this. So we're still one over with three holes to go. Not bad for a cost that I've not seen at all. Hole 7, par 4, 367 meters. Visually, this looks like you don't want the ball to go right. So I played left, center of this fairway. Did hit this ball really, really well. Better than the last hole, for sure. And well, what do you know? The ball found a fairway bunker. Had a really awkward stance. I had to keep my lower body as stable as possible and make good contact. This turned out really well and the ball found the green. It looked right to left, but just didn't take enough break. So walked away with another par. Hole 8 is a par 3 at 161 meters. I went with a 6 iron. Ah, f you, Darren. Why you hold it out? Hit a really disgusting 6 iron into the bunkers on the right. And when I stepped into the bunker, it just felt really uncomfortable. It was on a downhill line, very hot, oh. big pebble sand feeling, bladed this ball to the other side of the green. And here I'm pitching for par. Didn't get this as far as I want and I'm left with a almost impossible bogey putt. Missed this really far out. 
I wasn't really happy with that. Didn't bother about reading the part back and just, you know, tap in. Could this be another double par? Not bad. Safe day double bully. Not the best outcome, but I'll take it. Hole 9 is a par 4 where you can sort of take out a driver, but you're going to bring all the dangers into play. So I went with a throw away hybrid i thought i was slicing this but the club saved me <laughs> ball landed up in the middle of the fairway and set up with a 141 meters eight iron i just had to put this ball on the green walk away with two parts if i'm lucky one part and clock a three over at worst four over thank you for joining me on my second round Hope to see you guys in the final round. Um, we're going to play Mount Fuji course and hopefully we get to see Mount Fuji in that course as well. Have a great day and bye-bye.